Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mama Vic channel and guys, if you're new to this channel, here we talk about cryptocurrencies, we talk about digital currencies, NFTs, um, DeFi, what's happening in the cryptocurrency space, how is the financial market tied into the cryptocurrency space currently. Guys, we're currently seeing the financial market completely get obliterated for some reason and guess what, everyone's making fun of Facebook. Okay, let's take a look. $237 guys it's down 26% on the 24 hour okay and if you we can take a, a look at the six month uh, look at this there was a sharp drop in the Facebook market price everyone is sort of look some people are looking at this as this as a good thing um, in a way that investors or whoever is heavily invested in this platform is starting to realize that Facebook is probably too small for how we're going to see for how um, at least the virtual, the, the way we perceive vir the virtual world and how it's going to evolve. Facebook is but a small player in what is happening. And the realization that the future of what they what is called the metaverse right now is, is something that cannot just be controlled. That's why you're seeing a company like this uh, studying a word like the metaverse. But if we are to look at the metaverse as a collective of experiences that occur, on this medium known as the internet then the metaverse cannot be clumped up into one thing but just like in life there is always a, a leader in certain aspects of technology and in the metaverse I guess there'll be a virtual world that will be sort of a stop point for people to go there but I guess investors are realizing that Facebook is not a decision maker in in as far as the future is concerned in as far as virtual worlds are concerned but guys, stay tuned on this channel. Let's cover a couple of news, a couple of articles to see where things are going, where trends are going, what is happening in the cryptocurrency market right now, especially in a bear market or depressing times like these. Oftentimes, this is, these are the best, best times to actually find out or to look for opportunities within this market. So first of all, I want to cover Fesh.ai. This is a company, Cambridge-based artificial intelligence company that's creating these software agents and they're like modules of, of software that manage data to the extent of acting like virtual assistants on behalf of machines or people. So they acquire a lot of partnerships and they've been acquiring a lot of partnerships and iterating a lot of methods and actually creating technologies with the infrastructure that they're creating and this infrastructure is built onto the Cosmos blockchain. So these guys have acquired a new partnership and all their partnerships are strategic partnerships depending on a particular use case that they want to they want the infrastructure to to shed more light um, as far as the connection or the um, how it can be carried out or executed when linking that idea with the infrastructure that they're creating so i'm going to look at a summary someone summarized about uh, a summary made someone made by someone about their infrastructure and that will kind of make a lot of sense especially if you're new to this channel so fetch.ai will help us give you the best user experience as possible Fetch.ai is an artificial intelligence and machine learning based blockchain platform populated with digital twins. So they have another partnership here and they're called Unicred. So there's going to be more information about the Unicred. There's going to be an ask me anything that's going to take place probably on, on Telegram and they're going to give more information about this. But what we get from their website is a DeFi NFT monetization protocol and a money market protocol powered by data science. Of course, we see some um, some buzzwords there like data science, but you have to also understand that the partner that they've acquired or that they're partnering with, let's just say, these two partners is Fetch.ai and their focus is uh, really democratizing data and finding a way of, of channeling this data, making data actual actual usable, actually usable, at least in a way that it's meant to be, uh, depending on the owner of the agent that's managing that particular data. So that brings in concepts like self-sovereign identity, so self-sovereign ownership of data. So when a company like this says, apart by data science it's kind of it's encapsulating that kind of idea the premise of fetch.ai so we can see some pictures here binance smart chain polygon solana avalanche uh, others as well ethereum and uh, avalanche this is uh, algorand rather so i guess those are some kind of multi-chain infrastructure they're looking at or that they can blend into but there's going to be more information as stated uh, that that will be given on the ask me anything so this is a nice summarization written by Crypto Joey at Crypto Joey 93. So best way to summarize what Fetch 
or fish.ai has created so in case you haven't really listened to my videos or a tremendous amount of videos about that are made about the cosmos uh, interchain co uh, uh, protocol and some of the infrastructure or some of other uh, blockchain infrastructures from the, on the cosmos ecosystem like fish.ai there's many others they're really leveraging this infrastructure to build some really meaningful stuff so in summary of the technology stack that they've built we have they've built bots that learn from ai so we've I've seen some infrastructure where you can create generative art. We, they've also created DeFi uh, bots or agents that can manage your decentralized finance uh, stop losses and rug pulls can prevent things like that. Also, in a, in a way, store your funds as well as they acquire more information about you, which is which belongs to you because this is uh, decentralized infrastructure. So another one. So built on bots that learn from AI, built a city so those bots can interact so this is known as the open economic framework think of it as the world this is with uh, the best place within which agents can communicate with each other but it can scale out in a way that these agents still do not need to operate to be within that infrastructure that environment in order to operate they can operate outside of, of that environment but still communicate with other agents within or outside of that environment so build an open internet of info for bots to live in to learn to learn live let me read that again build an open internet of info for bots to learn and live so information collectively used within there build an immutable ledger that maintains records of all interactions between these robots we go we go back into immutability and these ledgers have a consensus algorithm and basically they cannot operate if they do not have that infrastructure that prevents the double spend problem so all this has kind of been taken care of and there's some of these developments being created onto this infrastructure that would then accelerate this very narrative of what these agents are supposed to do but that also ties into how the cosmos ecosystem also develops but i like the fact that all these developments are they they uh, connect to each other and they're in line with each other to result into this kind of um interchain infrastructure and also automated infrastructure being governed by these autonomous smart agents so that's pretty cool so there's going to be this this platform called mobilities or uh it's focused around climate and automotive so a two-week immersion into the future of mobility and these are some of the guest keynote speakers arian walker chief evangelist amazon um and Liz richard head global immobility douglas johnson from circular so one of the speakers on these platforms or in this event is going to be Himeo Nchik, who's the CEO of Fish.ai. So that's pretty cool. That's something that I thought you guys might want to know about. So let's go back into what we wanted to cover today just to see what's happening in the cryptocurrency space right now. So some interesting news. Proof of stake validator turns down the IRS tax refund offer purchase uh, pushes for clear policy on staking taxation. So to summarize this, there was a couple they used to stake. Uh, I think it was the Tezos, the Tezos uh, uh, cryptocurrency. So the way it ended, they said that they, they might the government or the IRS basically they wanted to offer a refund and these people said, you know what? No. What if in the future they come back and they try to do the same thing? So they the they wanted to seek for further clarity on how this uh, taxation would happen or the regulatory uh, uh, landscape or perception or the, the, the clear cut uh, rules on how this the regulatory uh, landscape is going to be around digital currencies. And basically, these people were like, I, th I think the, the, the IRS people said that they're going to look at the stake that you receive as property or acquired property or property that you're acquiring. But the argument the couple was making is that these staking rewards should be looked at as, for example, baking a cake, because you don't really know whether these uh, rewards are going to be anything worthwhile in the future or they might be worth more today and way less uh, tomorrow so you can't just look at it as a black and white situation that was the argument so the couple refused the refund from the government saying that they need more clarity okay so in this article here forbes has been writing a lot about decentraland which is one of the first actually in this article they state clearly that early merlich the founder of decentraland guys I made a mistake forbes has been writing a lot about decentraland okay so early Malich, one of the the first the founder of decentraland actually uh they write here clearly let me read this for you was an early pioneer in the metaverse by building decentraland along with estan ordino so this article goes on to say how uh, these people decided to really not govern decentraland the way facebook is being managed and rather uh, uh created to be a 
platform where users can own and the activity they can own the infrastructure and they can create a limitless uh, type of experience within within this platform without any fear of being fronted with adverts or being banned from the platforms or without any fear of having an overhead overseeing whatever is happening so and they also further further go ahead to say that probably decentralized would not have been as successful if they had governed in the governed it the way uh the main web two companies are being governed now so this was so sort of a foray into the way uh, how positive the web three infrastructure is developing and some of the advantages advantages it brings over the web two infrastructure that most of us are used to so the facebook's and twitter and how they run right now on centralized infrastructures so the guy himself, the founder, is focusing on another platform that's really trying to um, create a platform that manages NFTs and that whole infrastructure of art and how that is governed, sort of trying to take it mainstream. So this is their website. This is his website or their website. I don't know how big the company is, but I, apparently they raised a, raised a couple of million dollars to pursue this particular thing. Telegraph, but it's also speaking to another article or the general sentiment that's going around Facebook. I think what I'm going to read here, some of these are taking, some people are taking it in a positive sense, other people are taking it in a negative sense. So the shock drop in Meta's share price may be the start of a trend, says Animoca Brands chairman Yat Siu or Sayu. Apologies if I butchered that name. So this is an early indicator that they are moving away from Web2 and the logical conclusion on where to go for a growing number of Web3 applications. So for those that do not know, Web3 is essentially that layer that skips over the Twitter, the Facebook, these platforms with a centralized control and then brings in the platforms that where the users are in control of, that, of, of, their, of the network. So we have things like proof of work, you can mine and get a reward. Proof of stake, you can stake and make decisions on that platform vote uh, on certain governance proposals or even have a stake in the network get rewarded for securing the network so the rise of web3 metaverse token surge as meta's share price plunges meta's share price saw the largest single day slide ever but its decentralized computers mana and sandbox have surged 19 and 7.5 percent guys if you go to google and search facebook facebook price you can see it has dropped on the 24-hour uh, candles it has slumped. There's a sharp drop in the face in Facebook's price currently, and some people are saying maybe the investors are realizing that this thing is not as big as far as the metaverse is con uh, concerned. When you look at the virtual worlds, there's so many parts that come into play. It's not just crypto itself, but rather the experience that people have when they experience the internet. All kinds of experiences when you experience the internet and all these different experiences whether you're driving an autonomous car whether you're gaming whether you're transacting on a blockchain whether you're using paypal whether you're using some centralized entity all these experiences when they start to connect to each other and then bringing the mass when they, they start having actual utility such that you have mass adoption coming in and you mass utility as well or proper utility then you're going to see a massive adoption of these technologies and that concept cannot be controlled by just one company so we have some very interesting responses here from el salvador el salvador and and undeterred by the imf by imf and chooses bitcoin those that know imf sent out a warning let me read this first part of the article for you el salvador's bitcoin move is a sovereign decision replies his finance minister and i think this is where this conversation conversation should stop because this is a family affair but let's let's look at it in his own words so el salvador responds to international monetary fund their recommendation to of dropping bitcoin as the legal tender and to dissolve the 150 million feed bitcoin or fight bitcoin trust fund with a farm number so the sovereign states finance minister alejandro zelaya told a local television station no international organization is going to make us do anything anything at all okay so the minister as the countries are sovereign nations that make decisions sovereign decisions about their policies el salvador's bitcoin move is an international affair of a sovereign state on its own monetary policy the decision should not concern the imf of course and i think that's where the conversation should end this should be seen as a family affair small countries or countries that are enabled to contain it's in the inflation of the dollar and other currencies and what's happening right now are seeking these 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 immutable assets these uncorruptible assets to protect themselves to protect themselves so for those that are into this kind of news this is not investment advice at all ethereum whales are pouncing on a little known altcoin that coinbase just listed so there's an altcoin called rnd 
And apparently, let's first read what it's all about. There's other tokens as well that are being bought that you should take note of, like Decentralized Mana, uh, Polymath, the Poly token. I think this is sort of an algorithmic stablecoin, something like that. Uh, Layer 2 Scaling Solution, Polygon Matic, Axie Infinity, and Curved Out, one of the biggest lending platforms on the Ethereum network. So RNDR, which is the native token of the currency we're talking about, that little old coin, is the native crypto asset of the Render Network, the first blockchain-based peer-to-peer GPU rendering network and 3D marketplace that aims to make high-end 3D content creation more accessible. So we're talking about decentralized computing. We're talking about people that have talent in designing art and all kinds of things in this space, especially now with these NFT standards. Not everyone has the computing power to execute these types of things, even with free programs like Blender. So democratizing or decentralizing this kind of thing, sharing this computing power will put more power in the hands of people that don't actually afford it initially. They don't have the money to do these things. So we can look at this more positive news on the Solana ecosystem. We know there's been a lot of negative news that has been coming out of Solana. It's it's a bridge being hacked over three hundred million dollars lost and so many other security things happening, security flaws within the Solana ecosystem. But the base layer, the actual technology, the consensus algorithms are solid. So there's something positive that came out here. Solana has a wallet that they use, but you guys know that Web3 wallets, you get this seed phrase. It's sometimes a 12 word word uh, seed phrase or a 24 word seed phrase. So this is the seed phrase. This is a phrase that generates your private keys that give you access to everything you have or you own in that particular wallet or multiple wallets formed within that seed phrase. So what Solana has done, it has gotten its wallet and they're partnering with an organization called Web three auth that's supposed that's supposed to help remove while keeping security remove that barrier to entry that initial step of the seed phrase that might scare away a lot of people because well they just don't want to tamper with this stuff that's complicated to understand so it's a step forward for the solana ecosystem to allow to enable adoption to be much faster in another article here, Tezos, you all know Tezos, one of the people are bullish about Tezos because apparently they have this infrastructure that changes itself. So as the maybe scalability or security is needed, this blockchain is supposed to tailor itself towards the current need or the current market situation. So Tezos scores a $27 million deal with Manchester United and Baby Doge as well, Hacks Hoffenheim. So we've seen so many uh, tokens out there gain these partnerships with different uh, cryptocurrency ecosystems as a way of publicity as a way of well there's also a lot of money involved but it is a win-win situation for both so we can see more news here more sports teams more soccer teams uh you know going getting into the crypto space a similar kind of canine based meme coin floki inu which was created after elon musk tweeted he was naming his shiba inu floki was scored uh, scored a partnership deal with Italian professional football club SSC Napoli in November 2021. So we continue seeing these partnerships with uh, things like FTX partnering with so many sports people, Litecoin with the t-shirts, and we're seeing even Crypto.com naming whole stadiums after themselves. So we can see this space maturing in this space and this kind of adoption that is whether good or bad, it's it's still all good. There's no such thing as bad publicity. So we look at the Binance Smart Chain here, and this article is telling us that half of the top 10 uh, Gemi5 projects are on the Binance Smart Chain and they're referencing Dapp Raider. I'll open up Dapp Raider really quick. This is one of the platforms where you can have actually their tokens, one of the most OG platforms if you want to look for data on the blockchain ecosystems ranking, Binance Smart Chain, all other ecosystems. It's a very easy place to check and usually PancakeSwap in terms of decentralized exchanges has the most users we can, because uh, Binance Smart Chain really uh, uh, mirrored the Ethereum usability and put to put fourth the act the proper use case of the ethereum virtual machine and then with the binance centralized exchange it has really created a platform that allows the integration of multiple blockchains and it has made the usage of the blockchain infrastructure much much better the user experience because of this integration with so many blockchains which has even helped to scale some of them so it's not surprising that some of the top 10 tip, top 10 gaming platforms are in the binance blockchain we can see platforms like Hive and Wax, which stormed from the EOS uh, around EOS time. Uh, Wax and the Banner Smart Chain next. We can see Farmlands with Wax again. So Wax is really dominating this space as well. Axie Infinity, Ethereum and uh, Ronin, Upland on EOS, Crazy Defense uh, Warriors on Polygon and ETH. So we can see <clears throat> Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, Polygon Network, the Wax blockchain dominating this space. I'm not seeing any of that stuff like 
you know, I'm not going to mention names, but Immutable X and so, and so on. We Sometimes we have to look at these projects that have been around for a while that understand what is happening, especially when it comes to these very, very sensitive things like layer two solutions where you're going to be bridging value across blockchains. Um, we can see some news. GameStop partners with Immutable X for NFT marketplace. So speak of Immutable X and announces a hundred million dollar grant for creators. Apparently, they want to provide this for private investors, uh, decentralized autonomous organization, the Web3 concept itself metaverse it services and so on and there were some a few queries from the community because the community thought gamestop was going to use loopring which is another layer two scaling solution for the ethereum network or rather yes layer two scaling solution but gamestop and then they pushed out an announcement saying gamestop will not integrate any blockchain protocol other than the ethereum layer one and loopring into their nft marketplace with our first uh having integrated immutable x because some arguments that while well, you guys will really do anything to stay in business, including investing heavily into FUD, and not to mention that their stock price is down 70% currently. So a lot of people, I guess, don't like the fact that they're just shuffling themselves around instead of sticking to one thing. So the last thing, of course, I think this is extremely important, the Binance Smart Chain put out their focus. Their focus is going to be for 2022 is going to be community building. Guys, we know community is extremely important when you look at things like Board Ape, Yash Club, when you look at building a community for a specific thing. And this has developed properly in, a, in the NFT space. We see crypto itself being defragmented. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Binance Smart Chain, uh, the stablecoin, USD Tether, DAI, and so on. So similarly, building community is has established itself as one of the things you have to look out to if you are to build a successful product. You can't just build and wait for that for them to come, but also building a, a community of people that trust your product, that believe in your product, that truly believe in your team, and that you can deliver is as established itself as one of the metrics to look at. The other is looking at multi-chain how do you integrate your infrastructure in the blockchain ecosystem to make them multi-chain or how do you build infrastructure that other people can use to tap into easily tap into other ecosystems so that ties into user interface and all that user ability and adoption then scalability scalability issues we're seeing ethereum very high fees scalability goes into uh, transactions uh how, how much activity is happening on that blockchain how much throughput this blockchain has how fast it is and when it goes into things like transaction how low the transactions can be for any scale of transactions so a seamless interaction with these ecosystems without any barriers will be very very good for the adoption of cryptocurrencies blockchain and all concepts around this this virtual concept if it's to be adopted the user experience has to be improved and this is the appeal here all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something and i'll see you on the next one take care Bye bye